Always, Michael. Yesterday saw a positive GDP print from the US and consumer sentiment out there also looking positive. So a rate hike looks uh, almost certain and it appears to be a risk on day to day uh, with markets in the black. So tell us what you think. Yeah, so GDP number yesterday in the US, it's uh, the best number that they've had in two years in terms of growth. Um, that number was actually revised higher, so that's their third quarter, third quarter GDP for 2016. Um, and a strong uh, numbers coming through from the consumer sector and on the housing sector, and those are two key uh, areas where the Fed look at. Uh, markets basically factored in, uh, the, the market's saying there's basically a 100% chance now of a, a rate hike uh, uh, next month. Um, so we, we'll have to wait and see. The result is that money will be flowing towards the US uh, to take advantage of those higher rates. Um, but yeah, like you say, risk on day today, uh, good for our markets, uh, not so good for commodities at the moment. Iron ore prices have uh, been struggling, um, but we're going to have to wait and see what, what happens going forward at uh, the Fed meeting. So now the big story today is obviously that of OPEC uh, meeting today in Vienna um, to decide on an oil output curb. Uh, but obviously we're hearing rumblings that people are still not agreeing. What do you think will ultimately happen and ultimately what does it mean for the oil price? Yeah, so just before I left the office, there were uh, reports that a uh, deal was basically done. So nothing's uh, done and dusted yet. But uh, on that news, uh, oil prices spiked 6%. Um, and that's on yesterday falling 3% on the news that uh, Iran said that they're not going to cut their, their, their production. Um, so, look, even if a deal does get signed today, the big thing going forward is Will people adhere to their quotas? Uh, OPEC's got a long history of saying, this is what we're agreeing on, and then everyone else going and doing uh, something else. So uh, will, will the, uh, the people, uh, I think OPEC agree that uh, uh, for, for oil prices to stay elevated, a cut is needed. But uh, as soon as you ask any individual nation, are you willing to cut your, your production, all of the nations saying, no, no, not us, uh, maybe one of the other guys. So we'll have to see what happens on that front. Uh, obviously, Russia is a big, uh, big player in, in the oil industry, not part of OPEC, but uh, uh, generally on the sidelines of those talks. Uh, the, uh, OPEC hoping that Russia will cut uh, production numbers there. Um, but uh, again, Russia's biggest oil company coming out and saying, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not willing to cut numbers. They need uh, the production going through to keep their profits up. So all in all, we're going to have to wait and see. And then obviously what happens with the frackers? Uh, if OPEC cuts production, uh, good chance that the fracking, if frackers in the U.S. just uh, take their place and uh, keep put, putting pressure on prices. And as a consumer, I think that's amazing. So why do we see the oil price having risen by as much as 5% when people don't really know the details of the deal? I mean, uh, Chris Gilmore was talking yesterday about irrational exuberance. Yeah, herd mentality. You see one person doing it uh, and then you uh, do it first, ask questions later. Um, even though oil's uh, up 6% at the moment, it's still below $50 a barrel. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we saw it above $50 a barrel. So it all depends on uh, supply and demand metrics. We're going to have to see what uh, oil consumption uh, looks like at the end of the month when uh, the U.S. releases their inventory numbers. Has oil been uh, building up in their storage tanks or has be people been using it faster than uh, the U.S. have been buying oil? Um, that's, that, that's a question that we're going to have to see going forward. But uh, I do think at the current environment, you're not going to see oil going much higher than 55, potentially 60. I think there's more chance that you see it breaking below 40 than you do seeing it getting to 60. And uh, like I was saying earlier, as a consumer, um, particularly as South Africans, uh, this is a great news. Low, low, low oil prices is better for anyone concerned except if you're an oil producer. Indeed. Now, we're seeing that the RAND seems to, uh, to be losing some steam. Is this a general emerging markets currency story, especially given that we are seeing that the dollar, the dollar is strengthening today? Yeah, I think if you want to know what's happening in emerging markets in terms of currencies, uh, you have a look at the dollar index, what's happening on the dollar index. Now, the dollar index is just a basket of currencies compared to the dollar. And if the dollar index is going up, it means the dollar is strengthening. Um, and we've seen that strength coming through the dollar the last uh, couple of hours uh, or last couple of days, actually. And that's, uh, I think largely due to yesterday's GDP read coming out of the U.S., which was stronger than anyone expected and, uh, like I said, uh, best in two years. And uh, strong U.S. Is, uh, means that people want to put their money in that economy, take advantage of those strong growth rates, take advantage of the increased interest rate. And if uh, money's going into the U.S., it has to come from somewhere, and uh, emerging markets seem to be the place.
Uh, now, Michael, a bit later today, we're going to be getting some trade data out. Um, the Reserve Bank Governor, Lissi Chakanyaho, did warn that there was a, a feeling that we're going to see more deficits going forward. The market does expect that the October number will see a deficit. Now, do you worry that if the, a trend does develop, it's going to be difficult for us to finance that deficit, given that there have been these huge capital outflows uh, going to the U.S. because of the strengthening dollar and so on? Yeah, so traditionally South Africa finances their, their, their trade deficit through capital inflows. Um, if you look at our FDR numbers, it's still in the positive. So that, that, that should take care of uh, any, any deficits that we have. Worst case scenario, you see deficits developing. Um, and because a deficit's developing, it means that we have to sell rands to buy the currencies to fund those deficits. Uh, selling rands means rand weakness, and rand weakness means good for exporters, and then you eliminate that deficit. So the market does have checks and balances. It might not happen instantly, but uh, it definitely will come around. Um, and if we do see uh, a number of deficits building, uh, you're probably going to see around weakness as a result. Um, but then we, we, we stabilize again. So uh, I'm not, not one to forecast too far into the future, um, but uh, I do think we'll be okay on that front. Okay, well, swings and roundabouts, I think that's the message that you're giving us. We're going to leave it there, Michael. We've run out of time. Thank you so much for your time. That was Michael Trehan. He's a portfolio manager at Vestact.